Now let's add a more useful REST controller here. Instead of doing everything in this application itself, let's create a new class that acts as a customer REST controller. And this controller should have mappings for get, post, put, delete requests. So first of all, let's create a new class here called as customer REST controller. We can also add a sub package over here saying that this is something to do with controllers. Say finish. And notice that every time I add or modify some files, Spring Boot project is going to restart. So that can be sometimes annoying. I'm going to stop that. And here I'm going to say that this is a REST controller as well as this is going to handle all the requests for a prefix called API customers. So you can do that by typing at the rate request mapping slash API slash customers, which means that I can come over here localhost 7777 slash API slash customers and then when I send the request, this request will now be handled by one of the function within this particular class. And let's say we want to have a function here which gives me some response. So I'm going to write a function here called public. I can say string. Let's call it as get all customers return all customers data will come from here. The only thing that I have to do here is to say at the rate get mapping. Now at the rate get mapping is equivalent to a request mapping with a method of get. So I can as well say here request mapping method equals to request method dot get. So this was the only way you could have done in the past. But now we have a simpler way of doing by saying get mapping. So let's save this, run the program and see if we can get this going. So I'm going to go here, right click, run as Java application. And then I can come down here and then say API slash customers. I press enter and it says all customers data will come here. But what we want is not a string, but a JSON representation of customer data. And we don't have any class representing customers. So let's begin by creating a class called customer representing customer data. For this, I'm going to go and create a new class called customer. I right click on this code.pnode.controllers, new class. But this class being an entity class, I can name the package as code.vino.entity or model or domain and then give the name as customer. Let's assume that we do have a integer ID for a customer, couple of other details such as customer name and email, probably a phone number, let's say city, state and probably country. We also want to know whether the customer is male or female. So I can say private string gender. And I think this should be good enough for our customer class. Since all these are private variables, you can only make use of them by exposing via getters and setters. Now traditionally we would have done that by going to source, generate getters and setters, and then you can add a two string constructor using fields, constructor using superclass, etc. etc. But we do have a better mechanism called Lombok. Now, to work with Lombok, let's go to our Spring initializer, add Lombok as a dependency, get the newer version of POM, copy that, and go back to our project replace the current pom.xml with that one and in a minute that project is ready 
Now in my case, Lombok has been already set up. So if I go to customer.java and add here at the rate no orgs constructor, you will see that there is a constructor in the outline as well as I can say at the rate getter, at the rate setter and you can see that getters and setters are added automatically. Now in your case if you are using Lombok for the first time this may not happen. So first thing you do is to go to maven dependencies, expand this, find out where is the Lombok jar. In my case right here, right click and say copy qualified name and this will give me the name and location of the jar. You can also see it the status bar here. It's under my users Vinod Kumar dot m2 repository org project lombok lombok etc so you can find that right here now on windows you have to go to that location and double click the lombok.jar on mac or linux open a terminal and then just type java minus jar followed by the jar file name which i just copied from eclipse and then when i press enter it is going to come up with a user interface and this user interface will search for all the IDs that are there like this in my case it is under slash applications eclipse.app if you don't see your eclipse location over here you can click on the specify location find out the eclipse.ini file and then you should be able to install or update in my case it's already updated you can see that the symbol here but if you want you can always say install update and then quit the installer once you have installed you have to close Eclipse and open. Now do not do file restart that doesn't help. You have to physically close Eclipse and then open again and then you should be able to see your respective getter setters or any other additional annotations that you have used. Now that I have here a customer class let's go to our customer rest controller and say that we would like to return a list of customers over here and to do so I can say list of customer import list from java.util by pressing ctrl shift o on windows or command shift o on mac and make sure that you select from java.util.list and now we need to return a list of customers over here let's say I want to create two customers and then return them as a list so let's say customer c1 equals to new customer c1 dot set id of 1 let's say set name of let's say i give my name c1 dot set email c1 dot set phone and then c1 dot set city bangalore c1 dot set gender I can also create a second customer let's call it as c2 equals to new customer and then I'll say c2.set id of 2 c2.set name of let's say Sham set email and I think c2.set city should do the job. Now in order to return these two customers as a list I'm going to simply say return arrays dot as list of c1 comma c2. Now that this function is ready let's go and rerun the application dot java which starts our tomcat server and then I can go back to the browser and access the same thing and you will see now I got a JSON version of the object.